Hello and welcome to another segment of DSU Inside Perspective. I'm Carlos Holmes and this is the show where we talk with faculty, staff, students, and guests about some of the things that are going on in the world and some of the great things that are going on at Delaware State University. Delaware State University right now has 34 new students. We have a bunch of new students, but we have 34 special students. We call them dreamers. And these students are uh, undocumented students, uh, immigrant students that are protected, thank God, by uh, President Obama's uh, executive order that protects such children of, of immigrants that may not have uh, the proper paperwork to be here. I have a guest on the show who is a new Delaware State University, Daniela Rivera. Yes. Did I say it right? Yes, you did. Okay, I'm working on that. <laughs> uh, she is one of our, what we call Dreamer students. She is the beneficiary of a scholarship program that comes from the Don Graham Foundation. and. Uh, and uh, how are you doing here at Dell State? How's it going? I'm doing great. Come I'm over actually. And look at me here. How are we doing? There? I'm doing great. I love the campus. I so far am enjoying all classes. My instructors, um, people here are really nice. Mm -hmm. You're able to fit in the community, um, mm -hmm. and also us within the group. It's kind of it can get a bit hard trying to break those borders and go outside mm -hmm. of our comfort zone, talking mm -hmm. to other people. But we managed to do that. Mm -hmm. Everybody's been very friendly. Uh, very nice, very um, well educated. It's it's easy to communicate with other people. So, what's your major? Uh, wildlife management. Wildlife management. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, tell me something. You're 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 considered an undocumented child of Im immigrant. Mm -hmm. You've got this great protection that President Obama has provided now. Mm -hmm. But what are some of the biggest misconceptions that you feel um, American people have about undocumented children of immigrants? Um. I've never really like encountered a situation where you know I've been put in that position and been uncomfortable but big stereotypes that I've heard um, from other friends and I've seen are the whole it's it's unfair because and it's not only like Hispanic immigrants it can be any, any, any yeah taking jobs that's the typical taking jobs um, that it's unfair that people here that were born here, U.S. citizens, have and should deserve uh, scholarships like this because they they have the right to. They were born here, and we're just coming in and you know taking their education, taking their jobs, and it's that's always been the biggest one. Um, but you've lived here a good portion of your life. Now. Yes, I have. I was brought here at the age of five, and I left at the age of twelve came back at the age of 14, and now I'm 19 again. Well, 19. What town in Mexico, what part of Mexico did you originally come from? Celaya, uh, Guanajuato. The, and geographically, is that north, south, east, uh, west, south, central? South, right next to um, the Mexico City. Okay, so more towards the central mm -hmm. area. Okay. So one day, you were age five, you say? Yes, five. And one day, your parents say, Guess what? Yeah. <laughs> Bamanos, we're good. going somewhere. Yeah, at that time. Do you, you know, remember what your thoughts were at that no. time? No. I mean, five-year-old, I'm just thinking, you know, maybe it's a road trip. Parents are just saying, we're leaving, we're going somewhere else. You didn't else. really understand. I didn't really understand. I don't remember much. I'm sure a lot of people don't at that young of an age, but I do remember the second time very clearly. Okay, that was the first time. Yeah, that was the first time we, we came over here to And the, the first States. time you came the... Um, I don't remember it, but my parents say that uh, we were separated. Dad went with another family, Mom went another family, and I pretended to be um, somebody's child. I had to learn a, a new name. Um, I had a new birthday. I had a new uh, birthplace. I was born in the United States. I had to learn all this information from who who knows who, who you don't was. You remember any of that? No, I don't remember, but that's. You that's know, what you that's what mean. my parents say, so. But at some point you went back to Mexico? Yeah, I did, at the age of 12. Okay, at the age of 12. So then you came back again at age? 14. Wow, and how was that trip? It's definitely been the most hardest thing I've had to face because this time it wasn't through a car ride and me learning somebody else's um, information or I guess you could say stealing somebody's identity this time it was actually crossing the border through the desert walking walking yes from four in the morning all the way to one in the afternoon no stop walking Wow how many miles was that do you know I have no idea but 
it seemed endless. All you saw was dirt, dead animals, dead trees. Not even was dead it with trees. Was a group of people or was it a small group mm, of people? Yeah, it was with a group of people. It wasn't that big. It was my mom and I, um, like three older men and maybe like two other women. But um, I was, I guess you could say, the only kid. Wow. Mm -hmm. You were 14 at the time. 14. So everything, I mean, it's not five years ago, but it's still really clear in my head. It's things like that that you, you never forget. When you got to the United States border, what was that like? Um, it was definitely scary because you have that fear of getting caught and then being deported back home. Um, my biggest fear, the only reason I was really concerned was because of my mom. Because, you know, as a 14-year-old, you're a teenager, you're supposed to have energy and you can keep up and, you know, you, you can do it. And I was just concerned about my mom because she, she's getting older, so I thought she could break down at any point. But, you know, it was a plot twist. I was the one that passed out. Oh, really? From I passed the heat? out. Yeah, from the heat. I wasn't drinking the water because it was burning up hot. So that didn't do anything. So I didn't drink water. I didn't eat anything because I felt grossed out. Um, so I ended up passing out in the middle of the desert, in the middle of nowhere. But you came to? Yeah, I did eventually. They said, and I, I remember throwing up water. Wow. Yeah, I, I eventually woke up. I was under, like, it wasn't a tree. It was some sort of plant. Um, they were throwing water at my face. But ultimately, you made it through a... U.S. border point. Is this in Texas? Or yeah, Texas. Okay. I'm so not able to give you like the precise yeah, like, right. That's city. Okay. That's okay, but you made it through. Yeah. And did you have somebody waiting for you on the other side? Yeah, we did. Um, there was a railroad we had to cross, and there was a red truck waiting for us. And they, the thing was, you know, everybody was supposed to cross the railroad and then get in the truck, and then we were, you know, we were off to the next step. Um, so after crossing the railroad, we finally see the red truck, and that was like a motivation to mm -hmm. keep going, hurry up. Mm -hmm. So we, we made it, though. Let me go back a minute. Look, okay. yeah, at age 14, you're more informed, yeah. obviously, about oh, what for you're sure. doing. Big time. Was there any question in your mind, was this a good thing to do? Um, oh, wait a minute. Was your father still in the States? At yeah, that? my so dad never left. left. Okay, so it was he just was my still mom in and the I. States. Was there any question in your mind? That yeah, I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to run the risk. I felt like we were wasting not only time but money because to get, you know, the guide to do that, it, it's a lot of money. And my dad worked for, I think it was four years to get enough to pay for both of us to get brought over here. Um, but I for sure didn't want to do it. I tried convincing my mom to, you know, just tell him to come over here. You know, this is our home regardless. Um, I didn't want to do it. I was very upset. But your mother was adamant of joining her Yeah, home. yeah. She wanted Your to father. reunite with my dad again. She wanted my younger sisters to see him as well. And she knew also because there would be better um, educational like opportunities here. Okay, so now fast forward. Okay. Your reluctance at the time. Mm -hmm. Now, if you had to do it all over again, would you have done it? Oh, God, I've never really thought of that. Um, and, and maybe that's not a fair question without giving you opportunities to think that one through. Yeah. That is some deep thinking. Mm -hmm. but, but has your time been in the United States seemingly worth it? Um, so far, yes, um, especially now because of the scholarship. Because um, after I graduated high school, I had no hope into going to college. Not really because of my grades and I couldn't get in. It was more of um, the out-of-state tuition. And it was something that I saw unfair because, you know, my dad's the only one that works. He, he wakes up at 5 in the morning to go to work um, hours away. And, you know, he's in the sun. He's, he's in the cold weather. And I just found it really unfair for me to just want to go to college and him having to mm -hmm. pay after all he did. Just as a review for you, you know, she's not been the first dreamer on my show here. <laughs> but this is the problem with undocumented students that they may do excellent, and a lot of these dreamers have done excellently in public school, but they can't get scholarships. They can't get you know, student loans to state institutions because, they're, because of their status. And uh, so this is the problem, and so uh, that's why Don Graham and his foundation decided to come to the rescue of these students and, and give them an app, and, and Delaware State University decided to also give them access to this institution of higher education. Well, we, we're really glad to have you here. I'm and 
extremely happy to be here. And I've already hired her. She's going to be my Spanish coach, <laughs> and uh, we're going to work on that. But, uh, claro que sí. I wish you the best of luck here at Delaware Thank State you. University. I look forward to four years from now sitting out there with my camera, taking your picture as you march across the stage. You get oh, your stop. diploma. Ah, yes. It's going to happen. You're going to call You're it making me emotional. Year. That's okay. It's going to happen. It's gonna... Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. And thank you for joining us for another segment of DSU Inside Perspective. Everyone have a good day. <laughs>